All right, uh, we started this message last week, and uh, we'll pick it up again and finish it probably in a couple weeks. Um, if you know anything about me, if I have a three-point message, it usually takes three weeks to get through it. So we looked at point one last week, and I want to just kind of recap things and help us understand with the foundation that's being laid here before I get to the actual message. And so, because of all that Jesus Christ has done for us, there should be a response on our part. Amen? Because of all that He is and all that He's done, there should be something in our lives that respond to that. Responding to Him. And so, let's recap real quick what He's done for us. And verse number 9, we touched on that just real quickly. We dealt with this extensively in the Sunday school class. He took away the first that He may establish the second. Uh, thank God that we don't have to approach God through the law. Amen? Uh, because we'd all fail miserably. Amen? Amen. All right. Uh, that, that was Sunday school. You missed it. All right. Uh, verse number 10. Uh, but, uh, or by which we, have, uh, we are sanctified, and sanctified, set aside in God through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. One time, it's a one time, finished, completed uh, transaction. Jesus Christ paid in full for all our sin debt at Calvary's cross. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, that was accomplished, though that was, let's say, 2,000 years ago. His shed blood and what was accomplished at Calvary is still in effect for any person today. Amen. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. All right. And thank the Lord that anybody, no matter who you are, no matter what your background, no matter what has happened in your life, can become a child of God. All right. Not through the law. Not through your works and efforts. Not through a list of do's and don'ts but through the finished work of Christ. He is our Savior. Verse number, uh, look at verse number 12. Well, verse 11. For every priest, and it's referring back to the Old Testament, stand daily ministering and often, offering oftentimes the same sacrifices. Every year they did this, which can never take away sins. All right? And, and again, please understand, as I dealt with in Sunday school, all this that was taking place with the high priest going offering up a sacrifice, that was all established by God. Every bit of it. I mean, right down to the very minute detail how that offering was supposed to be offered and what was supposed to be offered and how the high priest was supposed to uh, take care of all this. It was all submitted and established by God himself, and yet none of it could ever take away sin. It was all pointing to the perfect sacrifice, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Verse number 12, But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. That one man is Jesus. Again, John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. There is no other way. There is no other Savior. It's Jesus. Verse number 13, From henceforth, expecting to his enemies, be made his, his footstool. And there's coming a day. There's coming a day when every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I thank God I'm on the winning side. Amen. I thank God I'm not fighting God. I thank God I'm not against God. I thank God I'm not ignorant of who God is. I thank God He is my God and Savior. Amen. And there's coming a day when my God, my Creator, my Almighty God will establish forever His kingdom. Amen. Amen. Establish it forever. And if you're saved, you'll be part of it. Forever. Uh, verse number, where am I? Um, verse number 14. For by one offering he had perfected forever them that are sanctified. You're saved, you're sanctified, you're set aside unto God. 
all right, forever, all right, why? Through one offering. Not as high priest, day, uh, year after year, or even the believers uh, in the Old Testament offering up every day, on, some of them on a regular basis, all right? No, forever, one offering, one sacrifice, that perfect Lamb of God. Verse number 15, wherefore, or whereof the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us, for after that he had said before, this is the covenant that I will make, uh, with them after those days, saith the Lord, I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them. No longer written on tablets. Amen? You know, th there's a difference between having the law on tablets and the law here and here. Amen? There's a difference. Amen? And God says, there's coming a day, I'm going to write my law on their hearts. If it's just on tablets, or if you will, on paper, we can read them, we can memorize them, but that doesn't mean we live them. Amen? When he went and writes them upon our hearts, they become real. Verse number uh, 17, And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. I mean, look at all that God has done. My sins, my iniquities, my transgressions, God said they're gone. I won't remember them. Matter of fact, he said, as far as it is the east from the west, so far as he removed our transgressions from us. He said he's, they're, they're in the deepest of the sea, all right? They're gone. And thank Lord that God not only forgives, but he forgets. Amen? It's do us well to do the same thing. Amen? Amen? Verse number 18, now where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. It's done. You say, what if I mess up? Listen real carefully. You do. You're going to. All right? There is no more offering for sin. What do you mean? I, I really messed up bad. Should I give more money? Well, you can give more money. We won't mind that, but uh, it, it's not going to remove any sin. Amen? All right? Uh, what, what, if I, what if I work more in the church? You know, I, I'll get more involved in the ministry here. Maybe that will help balance things out. No, 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 no. There's no balancing out. The balancing was all done 2,000 years ago. Amen? I am reconciled. All right? That is, that is a word that is identified like somebody keeping the books. And now you bookkeepers, accountants, Juliet, bless your heart, and others, you know what I'm talking about. It's nice when it all balances out, amen? It's a mess when it doesn't. Juliet, don't you hate it when you're new in the books and some of you others are involved with that and you're off by one cent? That drive me crazy, all right? I mean, everything, everything's reconciled except for one cent. Where did that go? What happened to it? Let alone $100 or $1,000, whatever, amen? Wow. All that was balanced out. Not by you or me. It happened way before we were born. It was established by God at Calvary's cross. Amen. Verse number 19, having therefore brethren, and brethren, believers in Christ, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. And so, because of all that Christ has done, he makes access available for you and I to come before him. Now, I want you to understand this. God never intended us to come before him like this. Amen? That's not boldness, folks. Amen? Now, there's nothing wrong with being broken over sin. Don't, don't misread what I'm saying here. There's nothing wrong with that. But what God is identifying, He's done all the work, not you or I. God knows we're the problem. Amen? That's, that, that, that doesn't surprise God one bit. Amen? And He still loves you. Well, that's something to be thankful for. By the way, He loves me too. Amen? All right? 
And so God says, listen, because of all that he has done for us, he's made an open door, an access for you and I to come before him. Not afraid, but in boldness. Not boldness because of who I am or what I am, no. Honestly, if nothing else, humility because of who and what I am. But boldness because of who he is and what he has done for us. Amen? Folks, I mean, sometimes we're so busy beating ourselves up that we cannot appreciate the goodness of God. When we ought to incorporate all that in in the goodness of God. Say, thank you, Lord. Lord, you've already forgiven me. You've already washed away my sins. You've already made it possible, Lord, that I can have fellowship with you. And you encourage me to boldly come before the throne. Folks, that's a whole lot to be thankful for. Amen. And uh, let's see. Uh, I'm forgetting where I am. Have him therefore, uh, yeah, verse number 20. By a new and living way, which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. A new and living way. He said, I'm not, you're not approaching God through the law, a list of do's and don'ts. You're approaching God through the finished work of Christ at Calvary's cross when he died on the cross and he cried out, it is finished. That veil ripped from top to bottom. Representing God making the way available for us. Amen. A new and living way accomplished through Jesus Christ. Not through religious efforts, not through our works and our righteousness, but through the Savior, Jesus. Now, because of all this, we get to our message. And we looked at verse number 22 last week. Because of all that he's done, let us draw near. Let's come before God. We have boldness to enter into his throne. So as a result, let us draw near to God. How? And, he, and we identify several things here. Number one, he says, with a true heart. True heart. Just like David, a, heart after God, a man after God's own heart. God wants us to be different. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. I am to be a different person because of what Christ has done for me and in me. Amen? All right? I'm a new creature, a new creation. All right? And so uh, that drawing near unto God with a true heart, he says, having uh, uh, in full assurance of faith, being established in faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and what he's, again, because what he has done for me. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse number 12, For I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Full assurance. Believing, trusting. Listen, folks, if God said it, you can count on it. Amen? Amen? God's not going to go back on any promise, anything that he has stated that he's going to do. He will do it. Amen. Amen. Mark it down and establish it in your heart and your mind, your very soul, that God will produce that which he said he will. Amen. It's a promise. So come before him with a true heart, with full assurance, and then washed. Amen. Wash, cleaned. Uh, I took a shower so that I could come to church. <laughs> now, <laughs> I know I'm washing the outside, all right? Amen. And, and a lot of you are thankful that I did, all right? <laughs> Amen. I, I even shaved and I used deodorant. Whoo! Thank you, Lord. Amen. Okay. And, and you all cleaned up pretty good yourselves. Amen. On the outside, praise the Lord. You're all, you're all looking good, amen? But what does God see on the inside? What is God seeing on the inside? 
You know, that's more important to God than what he sees on the outside. Amen? Matter of fact, really, the outside doesn't matter one bit if the inside's not clean. And so we see in verse number 22, let us draw near with a true heart and in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Come before God with the right spirit, a right heart. Now, folks, that doesn't always mean we're going to come before God without sin. Amen? By the way, that's one reason why we come to God. My conscience bothers me because of sin in my heart, and I want to come before God and get things right. So I'm coming to God with a true heart in full assurance that He is able to save me, not only uh, unto this life, but unto eternal life, and forgive me of all my sins, not just past, but present as well. Amen. And so I can come before Him washed, clean, not outward, inward. Amen. Which brings us to our message today. Now, all that was background, bringing us to verse number 23. Not only let us draw near to God from verse 22, but also let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. Let us hold fast. Now, I hope you understand what that means, and I want to pick on somebody, and uh, Jared, you're the man, all right? How you doing, son? I am so glad to hear that. You know what I'm doing to Jared? I am, you know, I'm not even done. Put that down for a minute and, and come here. And I'm, I'm just going <laughs> to, oh, goodness. I'm just going to hold him fast. I'm not, I'm not going to, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> I figured nothing else that would wake him up and get his attention, all right? Now, yes, I did have a lock on him, all right? Yeah, I'm sorry. All right. Mama's worried about me now. All right. You know what? God holds us fast. Not just with a hand. Bless God, he gives you a bear hug. Amen? God holds us, and he'll never let go. Never. I mean, he won't even slip his hold. Amen? He's not going to release it. Amen? 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 All right. Uh, by the way, he does that out of love. Amen? I, I was doing the same thing, brother. All right? I just want you to know that. All right? God loves us. And we're secure in Christ Jesus. He is the one that holds us. Amen? It's not... It's not us holding God. That's religion. And it fails every time. It's God holding us, securing us. And so here he tells us in, in verse number 23, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. As God holds us and secures us, what, how are we to respond? He's not going to let go. Amen? All right? He, he's holding on to us. He's securing us. But how should we respond? We should be reciprocal in the sense that we're holding fast our profession of faith. Amen? That we're holding fast. Jude chapter number, uh, Jude chapter, Jude verse 3. There are only one chapter, all right? There's only one chapter. Jude verse 3 says, Earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Earnestly contend. You know what he's talking about? You contend with something, you're going to have to put some effort in it. Amen? All right? Uh, I mean, it, it's talking about engaging a warfare. Amen? A spiritual warfare. It's talking about you and I taking a stand for holiness and truth and righteousness 
for the Word of God. Amen? Earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. But folks, the same truth that God established is the same truth today. Amen? The doctrinal truths that God has given us, we are to hold fast. We're to contend for them. We're to fight for them. Now, please understand, uh, that doesn't mean you put on your boxing gloves. Spiritually, yes. But physically, no. Amen? I, I don't want you to go smack somebody that doesn't believe what you don't believe. Amen? Amen? All right. Some of you were getting excited about that for a while, I think, all right? It's not what he's talking about, all right? We're to love them to Christ, amen? But we're to love them to the truth of Christ and not, not diminish, not change, not alter the truth, but earnestly contend for it. To take a stand, to be established in it, in the truth of God's word, and not compromise in any way, in any form. But, Pastor, you don't understand. They're my neighbors, and, and I, I got to be careful. No, 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 you don't compromise truth. Amen. You can still love them, and you can present the truth to them in love, but don't change the truth. Amen. Paul writes to the Galatians and he says, I marvel that you are so soon removed from the truth of the gospel. Wow. Here are Christians, professing Christians, that started to compromise with the truth of God's word. And again, Jude tells us an interesting, who is Jude? Well, Jude was a half-brother of Jesus. You say, how is that possible? Well, Mary and Joseph had four other sons, okay? Names them twice in the Bible, in the Gospels. Matthew and Mark, I believe, both of those. Jude was one of them. James was one of them. Not, not James that got beheaded, all right? The James that writes the book of James, okay? And the book of Jude, was he was a half-brother of Jesus, all right? What's the difference? Well, Joseph wasn't the father of Jesus. By the way, Mary is not deity. Amen. Amen? Yes. All right. She was a vessel unto God that God greatly used to bring forth the Son of God into this world. That doesn't make her deity. By the way, that doesn't save her either. Amen? Amen? Mary identified that she needed to be saved as well just like everybody else, all right? And my spirit doth rejoice in God, my Savior. Amen. Amen, that's what she said. All right, so anyway, with that in mind, folks, Jude and even James and even the other two brothers and sisters, best I can tell, how many sisters, I don't know, it doesn't identify how many are their names, but they were unbelievers during the life of Christ on this earth. Do you realize that? Here they lived with Jesus. That was their, if you will, brother growing up, their eldest. He was the firstborn son. Amen. And yet they didn't believe that he was the Messiah, the Savior. Praise the Lord, somewhere along the way, they got saved. Amen. And here is Jew that once didn't believe in Christ, now does as a, as a child of God, a saved believer, and he encourages us to earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Don't compromise with truth. Don't change the gospel. Don't add to it. Don't take away from it. Keep it pure because there is no other way. There is no other saving grace. There is no other gospel that can save people. There's a perverted gospel. And this world's full of it. Religion's full of it. But 
the saving grace of Jesus Christ, we are to stand for and not compromise. By the way, anybody that adds anything to the finished work of Jesus Christ is promoting, is peddling a false gospel, a perverted gospel. Anybody that adds or takes away from the finished work of Jesus Christ has, is, per, is presenting a gospel that is going to condemn people to hell. Think about that. And so we're to earnestly contend for the faith Ephesians chapter number 6, verse 13 and 14. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. We are to take a stand, all right, uh, and, and stand in this truth that God established us. And having done all to stand, stand therefore. Amen. Don't cower down. Amen? Don't, don't, don't feel you're afraid. You know, I, 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 listen, I, I know what people may feel like, and I, I've been there. And you go to a door, and you knock a door or ring a doorbell, and you want to tell, invite somebody to church. Or, amen? You ever been where I am? Huh? And you're, you know, you're afraid they might answer? Huh? You know, you're, you know, I hope you don't do this, but maybe you have. All right? Maybe, maybe the first time or second time you go out on visitation and you go knocking doors and you, your prayer is, please, Lord, don't let anybody answer. I'll leave tracks behind, all right? I'll leave flyers behind, but don't let anybody answer. I don't, I'm afraid that I might have to talk to them. Well, that's just your human nature. But folks, we're a new creature in Christ. Again, read all that God's accomplished for us. Look and see what God has done. And again, we can boldly enter His throne and come before Him. We can earnestly contend for the faith. We can stand for truth. We can't stand for truth by hiding. Amen? And we can't stand for truth by neglecting to tell others of the truth. Amen? Amen? Let's go forth. Again, if this is a spiritual warfare, and it is, and if the, the eternal destiny of the lives of people are at stake, and some are your relatives, your friends, your co-workers, your neighbors, their very eternal life, and where they're going to spend that life is at stake. Let's take a stand. Let's not go backwards. Let's go forward. Amen? Let's not be ashamed of the gospel that saves people. Amen? But let's ring forth the wonderful blessings of God's creation in new life in Christ. Amen? Let's tell people what God has done for you and I. Take a stand. And he says in verse number 23, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promise. He says, take a stand without wavering. Let's not be double-minded in our approach to God in our life. Wavering, you know, up and down, in and out, you know, it's just, you know, not steady, not constant. Without wavering, without being, and, and what causes the wavering? Being double minded. Being double minded. Do we believe in Jesus Christ as our Savior? Do you personally believe that? Was there a time where you received Jesus Christ personally as your Lord and Savior? Is that established in your heart? Is that truth there established for you? Then God is saying, don't waver. Don't yo-yo on this thing. 
Amen. Don't, don't yo-yo on your faith. All right? Don't yo-yo on the truth. You with me with the yo-yo? All right? Good. Wavering? All right? Some of you want to... Uh, yeah, no. Folks, be established in truth. Now, I, I know and understand what I'm saying here. Listen to me carefully. I know that as a child of God, one that is safe, now our faith is established, yes, for salvation. Amen? The moment we get saved. But understand that faith now needs to be perfected. Amen? How so? By God working in and through our lives to come to the place where I can believe God that God can take care of this. Again, I've oftentimes said this. It's amazing to me, but again, human nature, I can trust God for eternal life. But can I trust God for today? Amen? Uh, boy, one of the things that we're going through. We want to build a new building. Amen? Can I get some amens? All right, good, thank you. Amen. I, I, we want to build a new auditorium. Amen? Praise the Lord. I, I want to start it next year, next spring. Amen? Amen. Uh, if the Lord wills. Amen? Folks, we need to have faith to trust God. Amen? We need to be, be able to say, Lord, we're going to trust you to meet the needs and take care of this. Amen? We've got to step out in faith. Same thing is true in whatever we do in life. So what, whatever's not of faith is sin. Amen? And so whatever God is doing in our lives... God is trying to perfect that faith. Let, let me help you. No doubt in every one of your lives and mine as well, there's been some real trials where we had to come to grips as a child of God that, Lord, I need your help. I need your peace. I need victory in this situation, whatever it is. Spiritual victory. And God has proven to you that he is able. That there's nothing too hard for him. Amen? Now, one of the reasons why God does that is because he's God. <laughs> Amen? And that he is able. And he longs to prove to you that he can take care of every need in your life. Amen? The eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of them that love him. I believe that's the word. All right. Let me close it out. But folks, but another aspect of that is so that we can look back and by history, his story, that he proved to me that he was able then, he can prove to me now with this current trial that he's able. And then, boy, there's going to be another one coming. Right? And it, it may be a whole lot worse than that one and the one before that. Humanly speaking, it may be out of my hands completely. But Lord, there's a pattern that you established you promised and you took care of me there. You answered prayer and you took care of it there. And Lord God, you can take care of it today. Amen. Amen. And God wants us as his children to take a stand for truth and holiness and righteousness without wavering. That our, that our relationship with him is established. That we're strong in Christ Amen? Strong, our faith is established in Him. Now again, I know that's a process that takes place. But isn't it wonderful that God is seeking to establish that in our lives? Amen? Isn't it, isn't it wonderful? Listen, 
the, the truth, the reality of what was being said here is God wants us to get to our, a place in our Christian life where it's not up and down, up and down, and we're living by circumstances. When things are going right, praise the Lord, God is good. And when things are going wrong, oh, Lord, why did you abandon me? And yet, sadly, that's the way probably most Christians are responding. Folks, you understand that the, the valleys can be just as good and blessed as the, as the mountaintops. You understand that the valleys can be a wonderful, precious time. Matter of fact, I'll guarantee you, if you look at it properly, the valleys are probably the greatest times in your Christian life. Amen? Because God rescued me. God salvaged me. God helped me. God strengthened me. God proved to me that he can do it. Amen. Verse 23, let us hold fast. The profession of our faith without wavering. Why? For he is faithful. Now, wait a minute. Folks, it's not me. It's not you. He is faithful. Amen. Thank you, Lord. No, I'm not going to pick on you, Jerry. You know what God wants to do? God wants to pick you up and carry you. Carry through all the trials of life. Carry through all the disappointments. All the heartaches. He is faithful. He's faithful for salvation. He's faithful for every other aspect in our lives. I heard something listen to the radio. I don't always do that, but I happen to do that at uh, a Christian radio station. And a uh, very profound statement that I heard. Maybe you were listening to it, uh, and so you'll catch this. But someone, I forget all the context of it, but it was talking about, the speaker was talking about uh, whether it was his children or his grandchildren that were that were going through a tough delivery and uh, people were praying that that child would, would be able to be born, be born, you know, and the wife, would, the mother would not have any complications when she was already having complications. And, and uh, so, so anyway, the, the child was born, the mother's okay, the child's okay, and, and somebody responded, well, praise the Lord, the child got, was born. Yes. And the man responded by, and, and this was a pastor, and he responded, but it would have been just as all right if God willed that that child wasn't born. It's okay. It is well with my soul. Well, praise the Lord. At least the child was born healthy. And the pastor responded, it's just as well if the child wasn't. It's just as well. Folks, you can't say that unless you have that relationship with God. There's no way that you can face those issues of life in your strength in your heart. Do you understand what I'm saying? That such an amazing relationship that God can establish in your life and my life, that it really does not matter circumstantially what happens in this life. As long as I have a right relationship with my God. Amen. 
It doesn't matter. Because he is able. He is faithful. And I know there are things that may throw us for a loop. Things that are really difficult, if you will, to swallow. Humanly speaking. In our strength. But I want you to know this. God is able. God is able to bring a peace that passes all understanding. No matter what the circumstances of life are. He is able. God is able to flood your very soul with a joy and a peace that is not established upon the circumstances of life. It's established in the confidence that this is God Almighty in my life. And His grace is sufficient. He's faithful. Father God, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Lord God, I just pray, Father, that you would help us. Lord, it's so easy to go on in the Christian life forgetting our relationship with you, forgetting what you've done for us, forgetting what's been accomplished, Lord, and established for us. Lord God, it's easy even as a child of God to try to approach you in our efforts and our strength and our wisdom. Lord God, I do pray, Father, for forgiveness. And I ask you, Lord, please. Lord, may we understand it's all accomplished in Christ. For you are all in all. You are everything. Lord God, we just want us to come be able to put our faith, our confidence, our trust in you. I pray, Lord God, how precious, how sweet uh, this relationship is that you desire. Lord, I pray, Father, that, Lord, it become real in our lives. Father, that, uh, again, we're not wavering based upon circumstances. But, Lord God, we're strengthened in Thee. As Paul said, I, I am strong, in, in, and I'm paraphrasing, in, in my weakness, Lord, I'm strengthened in Thee. Lord God, I just pray, Father, that You'd help us to earnestly contend for the faith, to stand for You, Lord God, to live for You, to believe You, to trust You, and see you accomplish great and mighty things in our lives. For it's in Jesus' name I do pray. Amen. Heads bowed and eyes closed for just a minute, please.